Hi everyone, welcome to our AI Talk podcast series. In our podcast we will talk with people from the aquaculture industry, trying to bring you interesting, burning and important topics in European aquaculture and many more. So stay tuned. In recent years, advances in enabled technologies have produced innovation that are being implemented within the aquaculture industry. These include the fields of digital information technology, genomics and circular economy applied in fish feeding, nutrition and selective breeding. They together produce more sustainable aquaculture practices and more robust, healthy, nutritious and resource efficient farmed fish. Under the EU Horizon 2020 research program topic, Sustainable European Aquaculture 4.0 Nutrition and Breeding Innovations, three projects were funded. These are Aqua Impact, Future EU Aqua, and Efficiency. In these complementary projects, researchers and companies are together developing more sustainable aquaculture corresponding to the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. We welcome the three coordinators of the projects, Antti Kose from Luk in Finland, Osa S. Mark from Nofima in Norway, and Thomas Bardos from Aqua Biotech in Malta. Hello everybody and thanks for being with us in this EES podcast. I'd like just to ask each of you in turn to give me a short description of your project and especially focus on what are the main outputs that you expect to achieve over the project lifecycle. Let's start with Antti. In Aqua Impact, we have three main outputs. Uh, the first one is that we develop and implement genomic selection methods in the selective breeding programs of the European companies which have broodstocks for farmed fish. Uh, this technology is based on the DNA profile of the individuals so that we know they, the way they, they inherit the traits in a more precise way. The second output will be that we develop nutritional solutions, meaning diets, additives, and emerging ingredients, for example, from insects or single cell proteins, for these genetically improved fish from the breeding programs. And the third one is that we increase the efficiency and we provide added value by implementing digitalization, such as machine vision, uh, uh, smart software and other novel technologies so that the products and, and methods are working in a more automatic way. Thank you. Yeah, so in future EU Aqua, we, uh, we are working in the whole value chain, uh, meaning that we also have uh, impacts on the, the breeding and feeding. But our aim with the, with the breeding is more that we are trying to meet the future challenges regarding climate changes and, and also the need to adapt the fish for, for uh, being able to, uh, being robust towards these new ingredients that we are giving them. Uh, climate changes regarding uh, uh, also um, uh, increased water temperatures in the oceans. Uh, we need to know whether the fish that we have are able to cope with these new challenges. Uh, and then we have on the other side of the value chain, we have the, uh, the product and how to process it in a more uh, environmental friendly and sustainable way. We have packaging uh, methods also included in, uh, in the project. And in between there you can, we have, that is more common for all these projects, I think we have the Internet of Things sensors for, uh, for monitoring welfare and, and health and also environment. Uh, we have uh, different, uh, we want to promote the different uh, production uh, systems uh, in future year aqua. We are focusing on RAS, uh, IMTA, but also flow through. And we have, a whole, we have a whole group working only with consumer perception. And the uh, fact that we are facing challenges with, with uh, uh, competition for resources and, and places where to produce the fish in the oceans. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, in the efficiency project, the, the main focus of the project is how to integrate the new technologies which were developed even in other industries uh, and new, new sensor technologies, new uh, IT technologies. How can we integrate this into the aquaculture to make the different aquaculture technologies more efficient, especially in terms of the feeding and feeding technologies and increase the, the efficiency and sustainability on this way, uh, the aquaculture technologies. 
and we test these new technologies in different systems. Our focus is on the marine cages, the semi-closed system in the marine uh, production systems, the rust technology, uh, but we also work with flow-through and uh, pond systems in our, in our projects. The main outputs uh, of the projects will be uh, a decision-making support uh, system based on the, the evaluation of the different sensor data and integrating this data into a, a common system. Uh, and uh, this, this new decision-making system will be applied in, in a new generation of the recirculating aquaculture system, what we call as a smart uh, recirculation systems. Uh, and this is a product of our company, the Aquabiotech, uh, uh, will work on this. And uh, we also have some, have some work on, on the genetic improvement uh, of the African catfish. We thought it's important to involve a species in the in the research, which is a fish for the third world, for the for the uh, uh, developing countries, uh, and on this way we can we can also support the aquaculture development in in these countries. Thank you very much, all of you. Um, from one call, as you know, of course, Horizon Twenty calls are fairly text specific and they ask for very similar outputs but we have very three very different projects there all funded from the same call which is not unusual for Horizon 2020 and, and EU projects in general where multiple projects may be uh, funded the question a little bit is uh, will come on to later in terms of commonalities but I want to stay on the point about the differences between the three projects you talked about your outputs each of you um, one of the outputs uh, of all of the projects, I believe, will be the, a stakeholder platform. I'm going to address this question to Osa about your adaptiveness and your robustness with regard to climate changes. Uh, what's your research approach to this in general terms? You don't need to go into a lot of specifics. And tell us about your stakeholder platform. I will start with stakeholder platform. Uh, we have um, what. Uh, what makes us maybe a little bit different from the other projects as well is that we are uh, partially building on uh, a closed uh, EU project called Oraqua, where we worked on uh, on organic and recommendations for the organic uh, uh, regulations. And there uh, we had a stakeholder platform where we gathered people, very different people, uh, from uh, everything from uh, from retailers, researchers, industry. NGOs, policymakers, uh, where all these different people with different hats discuss the same question. Uh, yes, and it was extremely helpful to have uh, different views. Uh, so we are going to build on that, and we are about now to uh, to build up a, a new stakeholder platform, uh, since we are not only dealing with organic agriculture now. Uh, and we will uh, use them both uh, in... Um, in physical meetings, but also in virtual uh, discussions, to uh, to focus on uh, the issues that we are dealing with in uh, in the future EU Aqua. Uh, could you please uh, re uh, reframe your first question? Well, it was it was talking a little bit about the, the the research approaches that are specific to your project with regard to the uh, underlying theme, which was the the changes in terms of climate and the robustness and the adaptability of systems and species towards those changes and a little bit about your research approach towards that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, so the project leader of, uh, of that uh, VP, Anna Kettonen, I think she uh, described it very uh, clever today at the meeting. And so we are focusing on how um, existing breeding programs, how well adapted they are to cope with uh, future challenges. So we are uh, about now to uh, to start an experiment where uh, where they have selected uh, families from uh, from benchmark and putting them into uh, one northern uh, locality with uh, very cold temperatures and one southern locality with a little bit higher temperatures and they are going also to uh, to feed them with alternative feed ingredients that we are producing in uh, in another work package uh, feed based on uh, insect meal and uh, no soya and uh, and very high level of of uh, vegetative veg ingredients and, and so that is in a way the approach to us to um, to use existing, not to invent anything new, basically, but to see how the existing breeding um, lines can cope with future challenges. And here we have a, a, a 
a crossover similarity Andy, with uh, with what Aqua Impact is looking at with regard to those breeding programs. Remember, this is a research and innovation action, so the stress or the the key word here is the innovation and, and and looking towards that. We'll come back to that later. But do you have any something that you wanted to add, Andy, with regard to what Osa just said? Well, for for us, the breeding technologies which are being developed are one of the major uh, focus areas for us. And reflecting the innovation action type of work, then we have the companies that are developing within their own uh, existing processes. They are upgrading them into these new technologies and the researchers can help them with providing uh, simulation work to find the most optimal ways, cost-effective ways, so low-cost ways, depending on uh, company-specific requirements. Uh, this is a, a typical innovation action in a way that we put the results into the practice in this way. Okay, well, and that maybe leads into what you wanted to ask. Antti, can you tell me what are the three projects' common communication activities? Okay. First of all, the consumer awareness is extremely important target for all the, the projects. So we, we want to deliver uh, information about the current and future uh, aquaculture practices for the consumers so that there is uh, neutral information available then and to induce a dialogue with the consumers that what are they uh, uh, willingness and, and wishes for the industry. Uh, today has been a very good example of the common communication activity what we have. So here in the Aquaculture Europe Berlin Congress we have had a common session together with the, all the, the free uh, projects and we have presented the, the first results for a fairly nice active audience uh, including industry members from the Congresses. And all the projects have uh, planned training activities, education activities, meetings, uh, workshops, and this sort of common, that we organize them commonly seems to be both actually cost efficient way to do it, but also a good way to reach a diverse audience, because also the projects have a little bit different uh, target groups. So this sort of things are very useful and the next steps would be to plan the future next year activities where we can contribute together to distribute the knowledge. Do you already have something in a plan for the next year? No, it's actually the next step that we will do after this session. Okay, thank you. We, we see the Commission asking always the where it funds multiple projects through the same call. Uh, and we've seen the example with the technical performance of Mediterranean aquaculture sector with the combination of Perform Fish and Medaid doing joint workshops, for example, as they have done here in Berlin this week. Um, so maybe there's something that uh, I can just kind of put out as a, as a challenge to say, well, trying to do something that goes out of the normal format. Um, you talked about, also you talked about the variability and the diversity of your stakeholder platform. Uh, Andy, you talked about uh, basically the, the idea and the desire to get feedback on what consumer wants and orientate our outputs towards consumer needs. Um, and then with uh, regard to the efficiency project, Thomas, your you talked about bringing in technologies and, and, and upscaling technologies and making them fit for purpose. And, and that leads me in really to my next question, which is um, within your project and how you see that uh, developing, how are you managing knowledge and what's your approach to innovation uptake? Yeah, uh, managing the knowledge in a collaborative research project is already a challenge on a, on a project level. And I can imagine it will be a challenge for us to, to handle this issue on a larger level together with the, with the three projects. Uh, in our, in my, my general view on the knowledge management in a collaborative, collaborative project is that, that it's very important that we have to have a kind of holistic approach on the, on the knowledge management because we have different interests in a collaborative project and the results of the projects are usually a, a results of, of uh, the different partners, not just one partner uh, on the uh, 
in the IP of the of the research. Mm. So it's, and and these different uh, interests can be very very uh, various. For example, the, the most known uh, difference in a in a project that a researcher or a scientist want to publish the results, why the company does not want to publish the, the results just by the end of the project. So, But if we can handle all these issues and uh, integrate it in our knowledge management strategy or, or plan, we can create uh, a solid uh, intellectual property uh, right uh, framework uh, for the project, which also can lead to a better uptake of the, of the research uh, results or the, or the generated knowledge. Because the, the industrial partners uh, are attracted by the solid intellectual property mm. uh, of the project. Of course, this is a contractual obligation within the grant agreement itself. And, and I think that um, as projects go through, certainly in my experience, uh, as, as coordinators of the projects, you need to actually go back and remind people what they signed up to initially, which was regard to the foreground IP, the way in which publications are managed, the notice to publish, uh, the acceptance to publish by other partners, as you were saying, some industry partners might want to delay that. Um, but uh, from the beginning of the project and over the three to four years of its duration, you do have that foreground IP which is, which is documented. The grant agreement is the basis of that. But of course you have to have some flexity, uh, flexibility because things change, things go slower than, than expected or quicker than expected um, and then you have this whole question about the uptake of innovation which is obviously going outside the project I'll come back to you for your comments on that yeah and and I and we have uh, methods and techniques I think in, in each project for example in our projects our method is that we try to map the potential exploitation of the uh, of the project from the beginning of the projects mm -hmm. we will have our annual meeting from uh, tomorrow and on the second day we will have a, an IP workshop where we try to identify all the potential uh, exploitable results of the projects and try to map what can be the issues with the exploitation of these maps. On this way, we will be aware from the beginning what are the, the hot issues of the projects where we need extra action to, to manage the, the IP uh, uh, rights. Also, Ante, have you also been looking into what you expect might be hot issues? That's a climate question or not? <laughs> no, but I agree with uh, Thomas because uh, also this is a dif different project uh, compared to other. And I, I, uh, I think it's, uh, you're pointing out a very good idea. Uh, we, we are going to have our annual meeting in a month and we, we are not going to have that meeting, but uh, I should have thought about that before. Because I, I foresee that we can have some issues uh, regarding IP when we have so, because we have listed uh, a lot of innovations as, and especially in this work that is going to work on uh, packaging methods and, uh, and processing methods. They are, um, they are working on some real innovations uh, and there are met many companies uh, involved in that. So, so I foresee that we can have some issues and we have to be prepared. Uh, so that is uh, that is a very good tip. And do you have a final comment on that, or you have an input on that? Well, as a general comment, typically commonly agreed rules, which everybody deeply understand, and good communication, they free people to do and and invent things, and then then getting also the benefit from them as agreed originally. So I agree with Alista that it's good to remind people that what the rules are uh, for IPR. Anna, do you have any other question that you want to, we're coming towards the end now of the podcast, do you have any question that you would like to ask our three guests? Or should we ask them for a final comment? What do you think? Um, how did you like your session uh, in Aquaculture Europe 2019 in Berlin? I think it was very innovative and inspiring. It was very nice to, to gather and uh, it, we have been encouraged to, uh, to collaborate more and, uh, and this really uh, is a good start and I think that we will, we will succeed in that. Probably we can agree here now that we want to continue this next time in Cork in, in Ireland and have a common session. So we are, we are telling you now that, <laughs> that uh, we would need this, this opportunity there as well. And, 
I think this is extremely useful. It's also useful for the researchers to, to meet each other and to start discussions after this meeting. And if we can have a little bit longer session in, in Corp, we can arrange coffee breaks and, and uh, networking meetings for researchers, which, which further can uh, support the, the cooperation of the projects. So, Alistair, I think you should know that. <laughs> well, I've got that loud and clear, yes. Um, okay, and we are planning the stages, of course, of the different sessions and the programme itself for Cork next year. That's probably a good place to end our discussion today. I'd like to thank you each uh, very much for, at the end of a, a long day for you, of, of coming to give us your insights on this. This is very valuable for us and helpful for us, and hopefully also for those that listen to this podcast. Thank you very much for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anti, Ossa, and Tamas, for participating in our podcast. Uh, this was a really, really good insight to your work and also to Horizon 2020 projects. I would like to thank you all for listening to our podcast. You can find our other podcasts on aquaes.eu under the member section EIS Talk Podcast. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.